I'm gonna be showing you the secrets of how to be getting extremely powerful in this game by manipulating modifiers on your weapon and playing around with some secret stuff in the game in order to become really OP. With these unlimited upgrades, you can easily farm any strong enemy in Tears of the Kingdom. Let's get into it. So there's two places I need to introduce you guys to in the game. The first one's going to be located all the way in Tarrytown over here. This is gonna be completely east from Lookout Landing. So if you're at Lookout Landing and you're starting the game still, make all your way all the way down to get to the Tarrytown location. In Tarrytown, you're gonna find a shop in the middle of the area. And it's gonna be really obvious because this is our guy who's gonna be responsible for everything. His name is Pellison. Now, what Pellison's job is to break down fusion items and keep them in top pristine shape. So let's just say I went ahead and I decided to fight a Lionel. And after fighting maybe a silver Lionel, I was like, hey, let me be a smart guy and fuse my Lionel blade to my wooden club, right? Which is not like the greatest option to do. So my sturdy thick stick has it. And it's like, okay, that's decent, but why would I want a base weapon that has an attack of seven, right? That's probably not the best choice for me to fuse a silver Lionel horn with that does a 55 damage. And maybe I get a better weapon, for example, and I'm like, oh, wait, this cool gloom sword is 41, and I might want to add my Lionel blade on that, giving me like very close to 100 damage. What this guy is essentially for is that exact reason. So when you talk to him, so he'll say, I'll break it down soon and done, Pelicans break apart shop, and it'll cost you 20 rupees. So this is the 20 rupees part here. Remember, this one is very efficient only for for switching out fusion items. So what you're gonna do is I'm gonna take this thick 30 stick and give it to him, right? So he's gonna break this down completely. And what happens is you're gonna hear a sound effect, something's gonna happen, and then you're gonna see your fusion piece completely separated from your weapon. Usually when you try to remove a fusion piece on a weapon, the thing that happens is you cannot get rid of it. So the only thing is you hit destroy and that's how you get your original sword back. So this is gonna be very good for that. So what I could do now is I could take my gloom sword and I could just fuse it with this sword. And now I have a 96 attack single-handed weapon, which is pretty cool. And now this sturdy thick stick doesn't need to be used anymore, make, rendering it to be absolutely useless to me. And that's how you pretty much upgrade the base part of your weapon. So the initial fusion weapon, and if you have a better fusion top. So this is how you keep upgrading and moving above. So let's go to the next part, which is going to blow your mind completely. Real quick, before we move on, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see more extremely amazing videos like these. It helps so much. Okay, thank you. Just hit it real quick. It's, it's somewhere down below. Now, the next place you want to head to is located all the way up in the Elden area. And pretty much right by Goron City, there is a shrine that you can get a fast teleport to. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that. It's the Mara Kugak Shrine. So this one overviews the town right below. Now, the weapon that we're going to be using in this case is going to be the Royal Guards Claymore. And the beauty of this weapon is that when it's about to break, when its durability is low, it's going to double its damage. Now, pretty much what you want to do is have this be completely broken down because I'm going to show you how to restore its durability at this part of the game for free. Okay, it says the Royal Guards Claymore's badly damaged at the smacking a few times. And now if I click on it, you can see that the attack is 64. We're going to be using this one as an example of upgrading. By the way, if you want to grab yourself a Royal Guard Claymore, all you got to do is quickly just fly over to Hyrule Castle. It's going to be in the throne room. Climb up the steps. It's going to be left of the throne if you face it. Up those steps and right behind the statue that is against the left side. So go to the statue on the back. You'll find that. There's your sword, your Royal Guard Claymore. Once you get that, it's going to spawn every single blood moon right exactly at the spot so if you in case you lose it you know exactly where to get it that way you can customize your weapon with me in this video if you choose to now this creature in front of me is an octo rock and there's a bunch of them in the game and you've probably come across them they jump out of the ground and they spit rocks at you but the ones up here in elden are very different because these ones are going to do a little suck before they blow <laughs> that sounded completely wrong they're gonna <laughs> They're gonna suck up something before they spit it back out at you. Pretty sus, but that's what they do. What you're gonna be doing is gonna be walking up to this rock. It's gonna go down. You're gonna drop your weapon and back up all the way. When you back up a bit, and it's gonna then suck up the weapon and spit back the weapon at you. But the beauty is while it's sucking it up and it's inside of it, you're gonna see a bunch of sparkles on screen. When those sparkles happen, that means the Octo Rock is enhancing your weapon and adding a modifier on your weapon. So when he spits it back out, I'm gonna open it up and in the bottom bottom right of my screen, you can see that there is now a modifier. Now, let me explain to you exactly the modifiers that exist in this game. The list of modifiers in this game are attack up, which increases the strength of a weapon depending on the value of the modifier. So this would be plus five, plus six, plus seven, all the way up mostly to plus 10. And attack up is only going to be applying to melee weapons and your bows. So for example, like the sword gets an attack up. The next one is going to be shield guard up. Shield guard up relates to how much damage the shield's durability takes from an attack. The higher the shield guard up, 
up value is, the less damage the shield will be blocking. It can also stagger or disarm enemies while blocking if the value of shield guard up is high. And this is only going to be affecting your shields. Critical hit. The critical hit modifier deals critical damage on the final hit of a combo. This is only going to be affecting melee weapons. Durability up increases the durability of a weapon. The higher the value of the modifier is, the more sturdy a weapon is, which means it's less likely to going to be able to break. This is going to affect everything from weapons, bows, and shields. Long throw is another modifier that increases the distance of a weapon when thrown. This is only going to be affecting melee weapons if you happen to get that modifier. Quick shot is going to be able to fire an arrow much more quickly. This is only going to obviously affect bows. And the final one is the five shot burst modifier. This one is the OP one. It's going to be a allowing you to shoot five arrows all at once. So once you approach an Octorok, the thing that you really want to do is run up in front of it and go ahead and drop your weapon. So I've dropped my broken Royal Guard Claymore right in front of it, and I move away from it. But you need to be in a certain range, like right about there. And then what it's going to do is going to eat up your thing. There's a sparkle, and then it shoots it back. And <laughs> make sure you shield up. I'm going to go ahead and grab this sword, and then I'm going to see what these stats are exactly on it. So I look up, and it says, okay, attack up plus four. Not bad, but not good either. But that's not really important. So once it basically puts my attack or modifier up, I want to take it out because what's really important is by killing it, you're going to need it to respawn eventually at a blood moon. So once it does a modified sparkle on your weapon and gives you that, it's done. So what you do after that is you go towards a second one because having a second one is going to be really important because what you need, you need one to bring you to a white modifier or a blue modifier and the next subsequent one that you find is always going to bring that white or blue one up to a yellow one. So that is going to be big. So white or blues get to a second one. So always do two on a monster. It doesn't matter what you roll on your first one. The second one's roll is going to matter. So here we go. I'm running up to this one over here and I'm just going to go ahead and drop my weapon. You can see it's fully restored at 36 because it doesn't have double damage anymore. And it's only going to have double damage when it's extremely weak and I have that extra attack up. So I'm going to go ahead. I drop it in front of it just like this again, move a certain distance and then it's going to suck it up. There's a sparkle and it shoots it back out. Now, if I click on this Royal Guards Claymore, we look at it. Now you can see that it says attack up plus six and it's modified to yellow. And I can get this up to a maximum amount of plus 10. So that's what you want to roll for and save in front of it ahead of time when you're doing this. If you don't save in front of this one and you decide to do it later, you can just go into another Octorok and throw it in and that's basically how you RNG. But the best thing you need to do is always save before your second one and then re-roll to see what you get. And going back to Tarrytown, let's just say I accidentally had a Silver Lionel Blade like we mentioned at the start of the game, fuse to something else. I just do the entire breakdown, take that fusion part out and attach it to my Royal Guards Claymore. So now with my attack up plus six, my Royal Guards Claymore and my plus 55 silver lionel saber horn, I'm going to have a total attack of 93. So when I go ahead and damage it, because of the way the Royal Guards Claymore works, and it's the total attack on this weapon is going to be 186. But I found even more Octoroks, and I'm going to show you exactly all the spots on the map where you can get it. On my map, here are the locations of the Octoroks I encountered in this exact spots. There's one over here. There's one over here. If you walk follow the train tracks to the end of the train tracks by this area on this wall you're going to find another one those are the three in this area if you go back to goron city and you start walking and you head over towards this waterfall area you're going to follow down this waterfall pathway you're going to find one first immediately in this area as you drop down then you're going to continue down the river and you're going to find another one towards your right side as you're going down the river it's going to be located here on the map but as you're coming down your character will be facing on the right and then as you go further down past the whole entire water area you can find another one. So that brings you to a total of six Octoroks. What that exactly means for you is a very big benefit. So what else was I able to do because of six Octoroks? Now, because there were six of them, I was able to, one, upgrade my Silver Lionel Blade just a little bit further by mixing it up again with the yellow modifier and getting the attack up to plus 10. That plus 10 attack modifier and then me damaging the weapon is going to lead me to have 194 attack. And now that we have it at 194, Look how fast I can nuke Lynels. This is amazing. And I'm going to have a whole entire video about Lino farming. So you're going to know exactly what to do in the next one when it comes to Lino farming. Now, I also wanted to increase my Hylian shield because I've been using that since the beginning of the game. It didn't break yet, but I'm pretty sure the durability was wearing down over time. So what I did was I got to one Octorok, threw it in. I got my white modifier. And like I mentioned, the white modifier to me does not matter on the first Octorok. I go to the second one. You're going to save in front of your second one. 
and then eventually I was able to get the durability increase on my shield. After getting the durability plus increased yellow modifier on my shield, I was like, all right, let's do the bow next. And I noticed I had a Lionel bow already in my inventory. I went ahead to my first Octorok, threw it over there. The Octorok sucked it up and spit it back out at me. And I was able to get my next modifier. After that, I went to another one to get my yellow modifier and that was able to get me my times five attack. I didn't save on my first try and the Octorok hit me and then I lost all my progress. So the moment you get your weapon of your choice that you need, make sure that you do save your game. Very important. After that, you're going to then have all the OP stuff that you need in order to go ahead and do what you want. So remember, two Octoroks, you're going to only care about saving before the second one if you're upgrading one weapon. So basically run a melee weapon, run a bow, and run a shield and rinse and repeat this every single night during the blood moon and your character will be extremely OP and have high damage weapons. I guarantee you this is going to be the best thing you've ever done in this game. Now that you're a professional at modifying your weapons and shields, you should check out this video over here. Seriously, click on it.